ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of my fellow, fellow graduates, I've been asked to offer a tribute to the parents of the grad class of 2017. When I think of a parent who had a big impact on their child's life, I think of Mr. James Jordan, father of famous basketball player Michael Jordan. His strong positive influence on his son is depicted in the classic 1996 movie Space Jam. Where Michael's dad simply states, if you get good enough, you can do anything you want. This shows how big of an impact you can have on your children's lives. I would first like to say thank you to all the parents out there who have been there for us since day one. These last 13 years of schooling would have been a lot harder without your guidance. You've been with us through all the ups and downs that school has put us through. You were always there to lift us up just when we needed it, even if we didn't know. You drove us up to all those late night games and early morning practices or music lessons. Thanks for being our biggest fan and making us feel like we were the best out there no matter what event we were involved in. We all loved you when you got really into our games, sometimes contrary to what the refs thought of it. None of us would be as skilled as we are now without all your encouragement, feeding our desire to do better and not settle for less. We are inspired every day by you and hope someday we can be as wise as you. These last few years it may have seemed that we thought we were too cool for you, but I can attest that we still looked up to you the same way we did when we were small children. Thank you for being there for advice whenever we had big decisions before us. Speaking of advice, someone who taught me a lot about my life was my mother. I am her sixth and youngest child. In saying this, you're probably first thinking, what kind of people have six children? But soon after, hopefully realizing that she might know a thing or two about parenting, I can assure you that she has been the best mother I could ask for. Growing up, it felt like I had four other moms as well because of my four older sisters' interest in caring for their little brothers. But this time is we're talking about parents, not siblings. From as far back as I can remember, my mom was as, mom, as busy as she was, would try her best to come to every sporting event, field trip, speaking competition, or play I was involved in. This is something I really appreciate about her. She is dependable and likes to get things done. My mom graduated from the U of S with a Bachelor of Music Performance degree. She is the person who sparked my love for music and is why I participate in musical theater and various choirs to this day. I'd like to thank her for every run through of every song I asked her to help me with. Looking back at all the work you've put in for me makes me realize how much you care about me. Thank you so much, mom. I love you. Now I'll take this opportunity to talk about my dad since he's been standing awkwardly next to me for the past minute and a half. A little background on my dad. He was born and raised on a farm just outside the southern Saskatchewan town of Eyebrow. So he made sure he raised me to work for what he, I wanted. A strong work ethic was just one of the many things I obtained from the teachings of my father. One of the other things is a sense of humor. He taught me that everyone can always use something to smile about, and he loves to share his witty jokes with whoever he comes in contact with, claiming he's got a million of them. <laughs> I used to think this was an exaggeration, but after living with him for almost 18 years, I can attest to hearing pretty close to that number. <laughs> Throughout my life, I've seen my dad go out of his way to help those in need. This example of service has shown me what joy can come from helping the common good. These are just a few of the many simple life lessons I've learned from my dad and I know have great, in, greatly impacted my life. Now that my half of these two speeches is coming to an end, I would simply like to say thank you to every parent who has made a difference in my life. I don't know where I would be without each and every one of you. I would now like to turn the time over to my father for his remarks. Good afternoon, graduates, distinguished guests, Parents, family, friends. Joel, thank you for that, that tribute, although I thought it was gonna be a little bit more about me. You know, you just, you can't put a price on a tribute like that, but if you could, it would probably include a new suit, a new shirt, a tie, belt, shoes, haircut, several hundred dollars for uh, banquet tickets. The list goes on and on. I digress. 
I was somewhat shocked when uh, Joel told me that he and I would be speaking today because having attended five previous FACI graduations um, and seeing several thousand students walk across the stage, um, I may have thought, perhaps even unconsciously voiced, my concern with the speeches that went on, given the number of students that had to be presented. So I think, it, uh, isn't it ironic? I feel a bit like I should be in an Alanis Morissette music video, but that would be more unfortunate than ironic. <laughs> and with all the great advice that's been given this afternoon, I, I've had to change my talk. I don't know what to give. So I'll turn to the life lessons, and hopefully they'll help you. Number one, follow your own path. In Lewis Carroll's classic novel, Alice in Wonderland, Alice standing at a crossroads with two paths before her, asked the Cheshire cat, which path shall I follow? The cat replies, that depends on where you want to go. If you don't know where you want to go, it doesn't matter which path you take. That's true in life. Don't cling to the crowd. The time has come for you to step out on your own. I congratulate you on accomplishing the easiest part of your life. So far you've had somebody to feed you, to clothe you, to tell you to be in class. Now you've got to start doing it yourself. The best thing about the world today is the number of options you have. You can make anything a career. Now having said that, you may want to consider a more traditional career. Two days ago, I watched Joel play a young lawyer in uh, Legally Blonde. He was a natural. Welcome to the firm, son. <laughs> to quote Alan, De Alan DeGeneres, follow your passion, stay true to yourself. Never follow someone, else path, someone else's path. Unless you're in the woods and you're lost, and you see a path, then by all means follow that path. <laughs> Number two, don't be afraid to fail. This has been mentioned. You can't succeed without failing. Joel attributed a quote to James Jordan, if you get good enough, you can do anything you want. If you watch Space Jam, you'll see a young Michael Jordan out for hours, shooting and shooting and shooting, become the best basketball player. Wayne Gretzky is attributed with the quote saying, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. If you don't take those shots, you'll never score the goals. Failure is a part of success, but success depends on how you respond to that failure. Decide today how you respond to the difficulties in life, the challenges you'll face. I think the principle is superbly stated in one of Joel's favorite quotes by that noted uh, philosopher, Rocky Balboa. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life, but it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. Thank you, Rocky. Number three, don't be afraid to say, I don't know. We live in a world of Google experts. Somebody asks you a question, you pull out your, your iPad, your phone, and you look up an answer, right? You, it's, you don't sound unintelligent saying, I don't know, or I'll get back to you. They should become your favorite tool, especially now that you're graduating, because in a few weeks, months, years, your parents will come and ask you, when are you gonna move out of the basement? <laughs> you can say, I don't know, I'll get back to you. <laughs> Finally, enjoy life. We live in a world of instant gratification. Unfortunately, when something comes easily, you don't value it very much. When I was young, which my children remind me was a long, long time ago in a land far, far away, we, um, junk food were called treats. And I only got treats on special occasions, or if I worked hard to earn them myself. Now that I can have treats whenever I want, they're just junk food. So, it's, you know, probably the occasional chocolate bar or bag of chips was better for me as a child as a treat than all of the treats that I now get for myself. So, look around. Look for things that you have to work at. And joy in life is one of those things. I read an article recently in Maclean's magazine entitled, The Secret to Happiness, Stop Trying to Be Happy. The article concluded that we're safer, richer, and more comfortable than we've ever been, but we're also more miserable. We're looking for happiness from our external sources. We need to look within. 
Enjoying life is recognizing that life is filled with opposites. There are good things, there are bad things. There's pleasure, there's pain, there's joy and there's sorrow. In my experience, the more I focus on helping other people, the fewer problems I have in my own life. I've had the great opportunity to spend a lot of time with Joel. Being our sixth child, he's in a unique position, is that he's the only child as a near adult, somewhat mature individual, to have <laughs> his mother and father to himself, which his siblings claim gives him untold benefits. <laughs> I think it's just an opportunity for his mother and I to help persuade him which nursing home he should put us in. <laughs> oh my goodness. I want to tell you there's nothing in the world that could replace the, the joy that I find in life spending with my family. My wife and I have passed up opportunities and there's nothing that replaces the time that we could spend with our children. I'd like to close, or almost close, with the following quote from the author Rachel Ann Nunes. She says, do, do what makes you happy, be with who makes you smile, laugh as much as you breathe and love as long as you live. For those of you who prefer a simpler mes message, Hans Christian Andersen said, enjoy life, there's lots of time to be dead. <laughs> Graduates, look around you. You're surrounded by people who love you and who support you. This is proof that it takes a village to raise a child. Looking at you, I think the village has done an amazing job. It's been a rare privilege to speak to you today. I wish you the very best to the class of 2017. Thank you.